So now that we've invested huge time and effort in acquiring users in a way that is sustainable and profitable, how do we make sure these customers actually stick around for more than five minutes in our app, become engaged, and actually buy something from us? Well, in this week's episode of Mobile Metrics, I'm teaching you how to move customers beyond the download and create stickiness in your app. Let's do it. So mobile app user activation is all about introducing your mobile app in the best possible light, clearly explaining the benefits, the features, and how the app is ultimately going to improve their life. We only get one shot at activating our customers, so we really need to ensure that our first run UX is clearly articulated and an enjoyable experience. So what is user activation and what do we term as an activated customer? Well, first of all, it's moving way beyond the download. You know, a user downloading our app is not really considered a active customer. They need to do something, it involves some kind of interaction. So that could be opening up the application, having a session length of more than 15 seconds, tapping a couple of buttons, or completing the first interaction or success milestone. Every app, I've said this before, is completely unique. So you're going to need to decide what you term as activation in your own company. So I would suggest if you haven't done so already, you go back and watch the second episode of Mobile Metrics where we teach you how to do event tagging within your mobile app tracking various interactions. And once you've done this, it can be quite easy to decide what you're gonna term as activation. So once you've got all this set up in your app, it's pretty easy to implement some of the uh, activation hacks. So what are the strategies and te techniques that you can employ to activate users in a far more optimal way? So you really do need an excellent onboarding flow and there are arguments for and against having onboarding altogether. Um, some would be of the opinion, if your app was really that well designed to begin with, why do you need an onboarding flow? But this is really a, a pretty sweeping um, message. We have seen with our own clients and our own data that apps that do have a good onboarding experience that help you get set up and understand the app do achieve a higher activation rate. So that onboarding experience is going to clearly articulate what the value proposition of the app is. We're going to reinforce that to the user. So you know, you, you've gone on, you've looked on the app store, you've downloaded this app, you may forget why you've downloaded it. So this is a great time to remind the customer now that they've opened your app after installation, why they downloaded your app in the first place. Clearly articulate what the value proposition is, again, how it's going to improve their life. Paint that picture for them and that vision. So reinforce the value proposition. Once you move beyond the initial onboarding, your app is expected to have great first run experience and overall, you know, great user, a great UX. In terms of the first runs, you know, after the onboarding, are they gonna just see a load of blank screens with no data? Or can you actually populate some sample data in here so it doesn't look so naked and they can actually kind of visualize what this would look like if they completed this section and how they filled it out. So have an example of what that screen or section looks like once they've successfully implemented it. Try to create that vision, create that picture of them having success in your app your app and them happily ever after them using it to, to get great success. So once you've got them into the app, you've gone through the first run, you've got them through the onboarding, you've reinforced your value proposition, now is a great time to move them as quickly as possible to the first success milestone. So the longer you leave it from them installing your app and having that first session, the longer it takes for them to complete that first success milestone, the greater the chances is of it not happening uh, at all. So you really want to reduce the time from first download to first success milestone. So now is a great time, now that they've come through the process, to present that button, to add that to do, to add this item to the wish list, to book that flight, whatever it is in your app that you know, is that first success milestone, try and get them into this as quickly as is possible. And when they do it, when they have that success milestone in your app, you wanna really spike feelings of accomplishment. We talked about this in our loyalty video and how you can use this to your advantage. So when I add the first to-do, when I book that flight, make a big deal out of this. Really try to go overboard. You know, if they add that first to-do, don't say, you know, to-do added successfully in a very boring voice. You wanna be like, you know, uh, hurrah, high fives, congrats, you've just added your first to-do item, now why not assign a, a date to it and then you're moving them to the, ne the next success milestone. 
So by using emotive language and by really spiking their feelings of accomplishment, we're hijacking the limbic brain once again, we're forging and connecting that powerful uh, emotional loyalty, which again will lead on to our retention strategy, which is actually our next video. But this can be a great way of, of, of that kind of positive reinforcement. You know, they've only just had this, this uh, first session within your app, a great onboarding flow, um, a great first run UX. When they added that first to-do or booked that flight, you made them feel good about it. You made them feel really, really good. You made them feel uh, accomplished. Push notifications can be a way of also activating customers, but you want to use this feature kind of sparingly. It's, it's really a last ditch attempt, to be honest, at activating customers. And you're only going to do this, you know, if you've, you've brought them through this whole process, the great onboarding, the great first run UX, and they haven't got to that first success milestone. And the app has kind of been on their phone for maybe a day, or maybe it's been on the phone for 12 hours, and that success milestone hasn't happened. Well, then you could try to rescue the situation by saying, you know, hey, you know, we've noticed that you haven't added the first item, you haven't added your payment details so that you can easily uh, book food to your location. Why not come into our experience and, and add that now? But after that, you know, if they don't engage with it, you're not really going to be able to do too many more push notifications. It's not, it's kind of, can work a little bit better at the retention stage. So at activation, really, if they haven't done this, you can try some push notifications. I wouldn't expect uh, massive results out of that. And by the way, none of this is a replacement for having an excellent app in the first place. So unless your app has some kind of utility value, it, it enriches or improves the life of that end user. You know, there are no amount of onboarding flows, activation flows, push notifications that you can do to really um, substitute for having a great app. If your app sucks, please stop watching this video. You know, you're, you're not advanced enough. You need to go back to the drawing board, focus on providing utility and value in a way uh, with a great user experience. If you haven't done this, um, and that's a little bit out of the scope of today's video. We don't have time to teach you how to build world-class apps. Maybe we'll do another series uh, towards the end of the year. So that's it in terms of activation hacks. Uh, next up, I'm gonna cover the methods that you can use for onboarding. So, let, so let's get into that next. So in terms of onboarding methods, there are a variety of ways that you can do this. I personally love using benefit-oriented onboarding because really you're speaking to users in terms of the reasons why they downloaded your app. You're giving them the benefits, what they're going to get out of this. And remember, people don't download your app for features. Users are focused on outcomes. So when you explain the reasons that they downloaded your app, the benefits that they're going to get, and those explicit outcomes that they're going to achieve, they're much more likely to stick around and activate inside that experience. So functional onboarding or feature onboarding is kind of like it's the opposite of this. You're not focused on the outcomes of that user and what they're going to get. It's more like, you know, we've got this feature in our app. You can take a photograph. You can share that photograph on social media and then you can get more followers or whatever it is. So you're kind of more, you're being more logical and you're just describing the features. If you are going to do this, I'd recommend you stick to explaining three features, explain the core functionality of the app don't go into you know, tons of detail and don't explain the obvious, you know, so the OK button and the X icon, that stuff's ubiquitous. People get really frustrated when you explain functional onboarding and you're like, to every little intricate thing, people don't want to know. Just explain the stuff that's important or if there's a lot of complex flows within your app, maybe there's gestures, you want to maybe use some functional onboarding to explain this. But really, these can be used in a kind of a hybrid sense. You can, you can mix and match benefit onboarding with some progressive onboarding. So with progressive, if your app has a lot of intricate sections and a lot of features, it might be too much to explain all of these in terms of upfront at the benefit stage. And what you may want to do is, you know, people learn uh, by doing. So when they're in that section around adding a to-do list item, that's the time to say, you know, here's how you add the first to-do. Here's how you reorder items in the list. And then once they've done that, well, then you say, well, look, here's how you sign a date to an item or here's how you maybe delete. So progressive onboarding is contextualizing that onboarding based on where they are at in the process. So you can use a, you know, a, a mixture of both, explaining the core benefits and outcomes at the very beginning, and then le leaving the kind of the nitty gritty stuff to progressive onboarding and just contextualize it in that moment for the interaction that they are, are doing. Um, in terms for uh, asking for location or push, 
Uh, this needs to be considered, um, you can really get this quite wrong. So there are, as we see it, there are three ways of doing this. You can kind of do the, the machine gun method. So when the app opens up, it's, you know, this app would like to use your location. This app would like push. This app would like access to contacts. This app, you know, it's like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. We're still on the first date. I've just downloaded this app. All these things are popping up at once. And this is probably the worst way that you could ask for access to push notifications or location because you haven't had a chance to explain yourself. People don't know why you want them. So it's absolutely the worst. What you can do is you could, you could do it at the benefit stage. So when they're swiping through the couple of, you know, the benefit screen in terms of the onboarding, you could say, you know, in a moment, we're about to ask you for push and location. The benefit of doing that is getting access to content relative to your location, push access to top information and treats but it's kind of suboptimal. Our statistics show that the best time to ask for push notifications or location access is actually in context of what, when you wanna use those features. So don't do it when the first time the app opens, don't do it at the benefit stage, but save it for when they browse to that section to maybe view your store locator. Then you need their location. Then when you ask them for it, they're not surprised because they've, they've tried to access that feature themselves. And now that you have a location authorization, you can do great things with that. The same with push notifications. Maybe they visit your uh, inspired section or your news section and they want to get access to some content. So you could say, you know, be informed of the latest updates. And then they're like, okay, well, I want to get access to the latest updates. So it makes sense to ask them for push notifications at that stage. And then when you get access to that, you get access for the whole app. So there's great things that you could do with that. Now, maybe, maybe you don't have features in your app that warrant unlocking access to location and push. So then the best place for you is to probably do it at the benefit stage, but just know that, you know, you're going to get a suboptimal opt-in rate. So that's it in terms of onboarding methods. When you're designing these screens, you know, avoid meaningless splash screens, cut everything down to an absolute bare minimum present an absolute max. If you're gonna do the benefit onboarding, uh, you wanna focus on kind of three key benefits. Apply the rule of you know one slide, one concept. So you're on the first section of the benefit onboarding. You have a nice picture, one line of text that describes it. They swipe to the next one. So you're focusing on one concept per screen or per slide and no more than three for the benefits. Use images beside text. Um, always try to onboard users before registration because that's the first point of friction within your app is they've downloaded it and they're like, oh, registration. You know, it's like this taxing thing that I have to fill out. Try to use social sign-in to cut down on form fee fields being filled out, but still you do need the onboarding before registration to reiterate that value proposition and reinforce it, to onboard them, to make them understand why they downloaded this application. And once they've gone through the initial onboarding, provide a way for them to get back there at a later date in case they want to view those screens in more detail. So that covers, you know, what is an activated user, a couple of hacks in terms of how you're going to onboard these guys, reinforcing the value proposition. Don't forget to spike those feelings of accomplishment when something, when someone does something successful, because that's going to spur them on to do the next thing and the next thing and create that cycle of success between them and you in your mobile application. Choose the onboarding method that suits you best. Personally, I prefer the benefit approach uh, mixed with a little bit of progressive onboarding, asking for access to location and push at the right time and not necessarily upfront and paying attention to some good design heuristics. So that's it for this week, guys, on how we bring users into our app and how we get them to stay. Next week, I'm gonna be covering retention. So on a, a long-term basis, how we actually get users to stay with us and how we create value on both sides. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. See you guys next time. Don't forget to leave a comment below the video. As always, if you have a question, you can tweet us at Pulsate HQ. If you haven't done so already, uh, subscribe to the Pulsate Academy. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Buy something from us and to do it in a way that, ah, what the hell? Um...